Today we're gonna to look at blending two movements. So the pseudo push up. So basically the pseudo push up is taking yourself past your hands, a bit like a planche push up, but you're keeping your toes on the floor and then coming back up again. And we're gonna combine that with the handstand push up to take us towards the 90 degree handstand push up. And the cool thing is the majority of these drills can carry over to lots of different abilities. So there's gonna be something here for all of you. It doesn't matter what your current level is. So let's just start off with that standard push up position. So I'm gonna externally rotate the hands. I'm gonna make myself protracted. So I'm gonna round the upper back. I'm gonna turn the toes over. Now when I turn the toes over like this, it's gonna promote me to take weight forwards. What we don't wanna do with this movement is have weight, lots of weight back in the feet. We wanna be thinking about coming forwards of our hands, rounding the upper back and taking as much weight in the hands as we can. Now I've purposely gone a little bit wider with those hands as well, so it's a bit more like a planche setup. And then I'm just gonna take my head and shoulders forwards of my hands, protract, round, and then I'm gonna do a standard push up and then come back up to that position. So the simplest way of looking at this is I'm trying to take as much weight forwards as I do the push up down and back up again, as long as I can get back up to that strong protracted round position there. And a super simple way of progressing it is I'm gonna use this line in terms of where my fingers are, and then I'm gonna use a target for where my nose goes. So there, I'm gonna start in that protractor position, nose comes to there, come back up again. If that feels okay, I'm gonna go further forwards with that until I find a point where it's starting to get really challenging. And I can really feel that going to the biceps more like a planche. Now obviously if you start to feel yourself collapse, bring it back to a point where you can do a few repetitions with control. And the cool thing is you can actually move that on the fly. So I could do one repetition at that max position, like that, second rep, I could do a little bit closer to there, third rep, a little bit closer back towards the hands. And then we can just add in the handstand push-up variation or merge the two together. So if you don't have a strong handstand push-up yet, we can just use a pike-like position. So we're gonna do exactly the same thing, set the hands up the same as we did on those shadow push-ups. But now I'm not in my push-up position, I'm more like my pike push-up position. So I do a standard pike push-up, come down, kiss the floor, come back again. If that feels okay, I'm gonna make it harder by coming forwards, touching, and coming back to that start position. So again, I can try come into a target. Touching, coming back again. It feels okay. I increase the target to further away. And now I've got a hybrid between the suedo push-ups and a pike push-up. And then if you're a bit more advanced and you can do a handstand push-up, we'll do exactly the same thing. Set up the same, but this time I'm in the handstand and then I'm just gonna do a standard forehead to floor push up, come back up. If that feels okay, I'm now gonna take the marker a little bit further away. So I think I made a triangle there, my head was around there. So I'm now gonna try and get my forehead to touch a bit further away. Now the reason I'm saying forehead is that I'm not a big fan of taking the nose or the chin down towards the floor when you do a standard handstand push up, as I feel it whips you down too much towards underbalance, but it does depend on your neck flexibility. My neck flexibility is very poor. So I think that's one of the reasons I like the forehead and not the nose coming down. But if I try and, whoops, let's try that again. If I try and take the nose down, you can see it like pulls my feet down too early. So I'm gonna try and get forehead to touch where the marker is. Obviously, as I go more down towards the 90 degree handstand push up and I go much further that way, it's gonna be more like nose or chin, but I'm just gonna let that naturally go into the right position. So let's see if I can get forehead close to where that marker is. And then back up. Okay, that feels okay. So obviously I could just keep progressing each one of those elements. So the standard suedo push-ups, the standard pike push-up but going forwards, and then the handstand push-up taking the head forwards like I just done, going all the way forwards to a 90 degree handstand push-up. But there is another option we can use. So it's the concentric only. Now this one's really good if your handstand balance isn't great, but you are working on that handstand balance, plus you already have the strength to get up to handstand. You could do a concentric only. So exactly the same setup with the hands, I could go into a frog or a bent arm planche position, touch the head, and then go up to handstand. Now, if that feels okay, we do exactly the same thing. Now, because I'm starting low, I need to counterbalance. So if my head and shoulders go further forwards, my legs need to go further out. So watch what happens if I take this slightly further forwards, 
do exactly the same thing. Extend the head, legs back, touch, and then go up. I'm arching quite a bit, but I can make it up to handstand. So concentric only is another cool one to play with. So I'm gonna push my hands down one towards the 90 degree and see what sort of distance I get between hands and forehead as I get closer towards it. I don't think that was where the marker was. I think it was further back. About that distance. So what's that in yoga block terms? So I'm starting to use this a bit more to measure because most people have a yoga block around them. They, they tend to be standard size. So from the line, that's one, two and half, two and a half yoga blocks away. Obviously limb length is gonna make a difference. I'm not the tallest guy in the world. Actually, let's get clever with this setup. I'm gonna put the yoga block there, roughly where my head's gonna be. And I'm gonna see if I put that there. So it's level with the red marker. Do I touch the yoga block if I try and do a full 90 degree? That was a long hold at the bottom, so you got ugly concentric. And I'm not sure, I think I got really close to the block, maybe lightly touched it with the peak of the hat, it was hard to tell. But I think that's where I need to be for a 90 degree handstand push up. So, how many is that? That's one, two. Very close to being three yoga block lengths. It's interesting, I'm gonna see if I can touch it on this one, see if I can knock it over. I'll just bring it back a touch. Ooh, getting stuck at the bottom today. But definitely touched, didn't knock it over. So that measurement's about right. So I'm just under three yoga block lengths for a 90 degree handstand push up. So the marker works as a really nice way to progress or measure your progress, whether it's in the suedo push-up, the pike push-up, the concentric only, or the full 90 degree handstand push-up. Let me know down in the comments which version you can do and how far out you can get. Let me know if you have any questions, and if you're interested in coaching, check out my app or my website, links are down in the description, and I'll speak to you in the next one. Thanks guys.